Hi there. Thanks for looking at our video clip about this little uh, steam engine I built some time ago. It is uh, an inline twin cylinder steam engine with a 7 8 inch bore and 7 8 inch stroke. Okay. What's unusual about it is it's non-commercial. It uh, was designed by myself and it has Maudsley's reversing gear. Maudsley's reversing gear uh, is different, quite different from uh, Stevenson's and other other valve gear. Okay, so I'll just rotate this so that you can get a good look at it. Okay, this is uh, the main view. This is the end flywheel end. This is the back side where you can see the lubricators for the. You can see the lubricators for the slides. Thanks. And these are the cylinder cocks. Okay, if you give them. A, like that, they won't fall out. Okay, they're not they're not unrestrained valves, so you can unscrew them. But uh, by turning them like that, they won't fall out. And this here is Maudsley's reversing gear. You can see this gear train that uh, connects the crankshaft with the separate eccentric shaft. Okay, that's uh, a typical feature for Maudsley's reversing gear: a separate eccentric shaft. And of course, that arrangement makes it very convenient for a side valve engine. It's just the valve chest is here and the valves are in it. So here you can see the two eccentrics and, uh, and the eccentric shaft. Okay, now no castings were used at all for, for constructing this engine. Now the cylinder block is cast material, me and I, but that was a solid block and it was whittled from that. The base is uh, hot rolled steel I was built from that. The the crank, crankshaft, and eccentric shaft were machined from 11 C 1144 steel, also known as uh, stress proof. The gears were machined uh, using the parallel hob method, okay, which has some advantages for home shop. The oilers utilize a plastic tube in which end mills get shipped. And the bearings are simply bearing bronze uh, bar they were machined from them. Okay, so there's no ball bearings used, just simply plain bronze. Of course, lubrication is important. All the main points have lubrication. Okay, so let's run this thing to demonstrate the functioning of Maudsley's reversing gear. So you will look at the gear, the train. I'm going to run this slow so it doesn't shake too much. Uh, it does shake a bit. Let's run it the other way first. Okay, you notice that the two shafts are counter-rotating. To make this reversing gear work, they must be counter-rotating. You can arrange this by having these gears, that one and that one, the ones which engage the gears on the two shafts directly, large enough so that they mesh. Okay, under no circumstances can you have one idler gear. So it's either those gears mesh directly or you have two idlers. Believe me, it won't work with one. So let's just have a look around and see it work. Okay, that's the front view. Brass flywheel. It's a small flywheel, flywheel used you know, in a boat or what have you. Okay. The uh, eccentric straps are also bronze. All the nuts I made, you know, to have nice model sized nuts. Okay, you can see the connecting rod and the, and the slide. The piston rod is stainless steel. Now let's go back to Mars's gear. Now, to reverse the engine, I, this lever, I simply flip it from this position to the other position. Now I, pol I apologize that the engine does not run smoothly in both directions. It, it, uh, I didn't finish setting the valves because I want to take it apart and finish it. But it does run quite fairly well. So we'll throw this lever. And now watch these two shafts. And this shaft now is running clockwise. The crankshaft is running clockwise. The eccentric shaft is running counterclockwise. Now let's see what happens when I throw this. Okay, so now you see that the crankshaft is running counterclockwise and the eccentric shaft is running clockwise. Okay, that's the beauty of this. If you look at the valve gear, it's simplic simplicity itself. The only complication is a separate camshaft, eccentric shaft, sorry, 
and that gear train. Now gears nowadays are cheap, whereas in the early 1800s when this gear train was, when this reversing gear was invented, gears were expensive and not really suitable for what's known as high speed running. That's probably why it never uh, really picked up very well, although I think some ship engines used it. But gears were expensive, as now gears are cheap, especially now we've got a gear hobbing machine, we can bang these out uh, very, very quickly. So that's basically Maudsley's reversing gear, and this engine I designed to, to demonstrate that. Let's run that a little faster, maybe. Okay. So let's, let me stop the engine and, and try this again to, to just demonstrate what happens. Okay, so look at the marks on the end of the crankshaft and look at the mark it's vertical here look at the mark on the end of the eccentric shaft which is horizontal as I throw this lever oh, okay let's put in one position as I throw this lever the, this mark is at diagonal now the crankshaft because it has more friction than the eccentric shaft it will stay stationary so through this lever you can see the eccentric shaft rotate okay with respect to the crankshaft. It's this phase change between the two shafts that causes the shift in the timing of the, of the valve gear and causes the engine to, to rotate. At no time whatsoever are these gears disengaged from any of the shaft. They are always, always, always in full engagement. Okay, So you don't lose the timing, but you merely change the timing between the eccentric shaft eccentric shaft here and the crankshaft. So let's do that once more and you should be able to see that. Okay, that's the beauty of the system. So using gears which are now cheap and much simpler valve gear because you only have two eccentric straps, two eccentrics and so on. So let's run it once more. Okay, look at it once more. For further information, there's a very good photo essay of this engine with close-up sharp pictures on our website entitled Model Engineering Forum, all one word, Model Engineering Forum by the Rusty Bolt. Okay, the Rusty Bolt, all one word. If you go in there and look under things that float and poke around a bit, there is a photo essay and some of my dialogue with other members and my, uh, my handle on that uh, website is Arminius. Okay, so there you have it. I hope you enjoy it, and if you have any questions, you could go on that website, or even in YouTube and ask me questions. I'll do my best to answer them. Okay. As I said, this engine is 7 8 inch stroke, 7 8 inch bore, uh, based on a Stuart compound engine I was building for a friend at the time, and the two crankshafts are identical. Okay, so the rest is just sized to be appropriate. Okay. Okay, I hope you enjoyed this. Thank you.